everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Deeper with Sophie Josefina podcast. And I am so excited because today I have a repeat guest, and this is my very first repeat guest, and it's Damien Bowler. I'm the first. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah, everybody told me how much you love this episode. And so Damien and I were still very much dropping into this topic and realized there was so much more to say. So all we could really do was just hop on again. So I'm so grateful you're here again, Damien. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here. Lovely to connect with you again. Yeah. So you're already dropping in a little bit before you press record. And um, I think what's been really in the vortex or what's been really alive for a lot of people is I think almost the next step in polarity, right? I think a lot of people have a concept now of, okay, what's more masculine, what's more feminine, uh, what these two energies can feel like, how they could interact with each other. And I think we're now getting to the point where a lot of men or male bodies, uh, and the same on this, on the, on the, on the opposite side of that are starting to cultivate their opposite energetic. And that's really, I think for me in my own work, most of my personal life where the interesting, where the interesting work really happens because when I just keep myself in my feminine energetic, I actually also burn out and I'm only my masculine. I burn out when I'm only my feminine, I burn out. So you and I were talking a little bit about this like concept of almost advanced polarity or polarity beyond attachment. Can you tell me a little bit more about that Dave? Because I know you have lots on this topic. Mm. Mm. I want to kind of like, I want to link up to mm-hmm. two seemingly separate things and kind of like tie them together that, that are in this first and we can go from there. Um, the first is so to link it back to the first podcast we did. We spent most of our time talking about attachment dynamics, the anxious and the avoidant. Yes. It's kind of the main topic of conversation. And it's a juicy one, you know, not in a good juice, probably like in a, a bit of pain juice one because... A lot of us are, you know, have gone through some version of pain in that family. And so what like what I've come to understand is like a relationship is something that's built on polarity. Like a relationship requires a form of polarity to even exist at all. Um, that's just the nature of I'm a bit too esoteric. A relationship needs polarity. Right. And so if we're in an insecurely attached kind of orientation then the relationship the polarity in a relationship is the anxious and the avoidant that's what creates the spark of electricity that creates a relationship but it's not a very good one it's not very efficient it's not very functional and eventually it leads to some kind of disruptive dysregulated and over time chronically dysregulated state if it's not addressed relationships end up in this chronically dysregulated state where it's like you pretty much triggered 90% 90% of the time, you know, and you've probably been there. I've definitely been there when like, and the, it's just constant conflict, constant argument, constant yes. having to work with it. And it takes all of our time and attention yeah. and energy to the point where the rest of life starts like just becoming really hard. It's not something we want to play in. So it's like, okay, we work on our attachment issues. We start to resolve them. We start to kind of, like, let's assume that, you know, there's a lot of work in this process, but let's kind of go further and say, we're actually really working on resolving that. We're moving into a more secure sense of relating. We're moving away from exacerbating these tendencies. And it is a big topic. And I know like, there's a gap in between where we're talking about, we're going to kind of go to the next stage. Um, and I want to address that gap later. I have something in mind later in this year that I really want to address that gap. But let's say, okay, we're moving away from, this attachment polarity running our relationship, we still need polarity, right? Yes. We still need polarity in order to have a relationship. So that pol- polarity is a masculine feminine polarity. That's what we're coming into. We're coming into an option, a place of relating to the masculine and feminine. Now, the second layer we want to put over the top of that is a developmental layer. So mm. There, there's a whole variety, like there's a whole number of developmental psychologists out in the world and I've looked at quite a number of them and they look at adult development. So currently at university psychology degree, you'll get a, you'll get courses, anyone who's done psychology, you'll get courses in child developmental psychology and they will map the development of a child's psyche up until pretty much adolescence and sometimes early adulthood. 
and then it stops and you go, you're an adult, done. But we're all here in the self-development world and the self-development world, just by being in it, presupposes the development continues and it <laughs> does continue. So there are developmental researchers and there's a whole number of them who have looked at adult development and certain characteristics develop as we move into adult development. And as we move through these stages, there are certain characteristics and qualities and ability to take increasingly nuanced and complex perspectives and relate from more and more complex dynamics. So there's a developmental lens we put over. And if we look at, we can break them down to some kind of quite basic lenses, but some of them have quite a lot of stages that we can look at. If we look at kind of, when we look at maybe polarity, we're gonna to have to look at polarity through a developmental lens as well, masculine feminine polarity. If we look at traditional stage development is the man is the man and the woman is a woman and the man goes out and he goes and gets some money and the woman stays at home and takes care of the house and and they have this relationship that kind of is mutually dependent on each other in some way but runs parallel there's not necessarily a huge amount of interaction between the two the man is the man the woman is a woman and they don't really cross communicate and for most of us, especially anyone listening to this podcast, that kind of relationship is inconceivable to ever want to enter again. It's like, no, thank you. That's not interesting. So we move into kind of into more rational stages when kind of capitalistic society kind of emerges and we have high success status seeking men who are like alpha, ultra dominant, you know, like kicking ass in the boardroom. And then we can have women who start doing that too, right? So we actually have women entering into a masculine polarity, competing in a man's world against men competing in a man's world. And now we've got masculine and masculine, which doesn't actually really create a lot of polarity. And you have a lot of high achieving women, I know, who are lonely, who can't actually yeah. meet a man and they're so in their masculine. Yeah. Yeah. You were there, right? <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and it's like, well, I want, I want them. I want like there's some part that's yearning, but I want the masculine, but you're going to have to ask for a man who's incredibly masculine in order to push you into your feminine, in order to create that polarity. And that's going to come with a whole bunch of other problems because some of that masculine is going to be so out of tune with the feminine. They're going to be so out of sync. They're not going to be able to hear or see her feminine at all. Really? Does that land you? you yeah. This is one of my core resentments that I thought that men couldn't meet me because my masculine was stronger than theirs. And I just thought, oh, these softies, why aren't they more men? I want them to be more men. And it was part of my, just like that narrative of like, where are all the good men? When I realized instead of me being in a princessy behavior of like, so when are you going to step up? It was actually like, oh, but what am I, what am I, what is my side of the story actually? Right. Instead of because what I'm still asking for is I'm asking for somebody to be bigger than me, to be the bigger one in the room. When actually I can also consciously decide if like, OK, well, maybe I am the biggest one in the room, but I don't it doesn't matter that much anymore. I can just lean back. I can lean back. It's not it's not a dick measurement contest anymore where I am, where I'm forced into <laughs> surrender because somebody's bigger. And I think yeah, that's, that's what right. I was I mean wanting. Yeah, and, and I love that you said that you brought up the dick measuring contest because when a woman is acting from that place, like I need you to be more masculine than me, it's basically like I'm flopping my dick out and I want to see that yours is bigger than mine. It's like, is that actually how you want to meet a man? Like to compare your dick against his? Like that's not, that's something men do with each other. That's not something women and men do together. So Yeah, and that is the interaction we're asking yeah. for. Yeah, exactly. When you're orienting from that place. So let's keep going. Let's go into the next kind of stage where, so what, what I actually believe is happening, and, and I have a lot of observational evidence to back this up, backed up by my readings in developmental psychology. We're preparing to enter into an integrated stage. And in order to do that, we actually have to flip polarities in order to feel the other polarity fully. So women tend to develop culturally historically a little bit ahead of men that's just mm -hmm. women kind of lead our evolutionary edge and men kind of follow it behind just a little bit so it's natural that in this developmental unfolding women in general uh, on mass tended to went into the polarity flip first 
Then we go into the next stage and men enter the polarity flip. And suddenly you have men becoming really feminine. Men going into their kind of like, I don't care about any of the things. I just want to go with the flow. And they start growing their hair long. Nothing wrong with long hair, particularly probably when men had long hair. I had long hair for a while. But it's like there's a, there's a desire to be soft and flowing and in pleasure and not have any commitments and just kind of like not really be attached to anything really strong and have multiple lovers and you know do all of these things like you know a, a little bit of lost boy syndrome you know like peter pan and the lost boys it's like yeah. it's very feminine you know and it's like you go to lots of gatherings and festivals and you know nothing wrong with any of these things but there's like a there's a going with the flow and there's no more there's no more oomph or drive or desire to create and build and protect and provide, which are very masculine qualities. Those things are kind of more interested in connecting and being in flow and tasting and sensuality and everything, which are all feminine qualities. So what happens is men start to lean really hard into their feminine and women are still in their masculine here, but the masculine starts changing in form. It starts becoming goddess masculinity right yes it's not yes. getting layered over with a feminine painting it looks feminine but it's still very masculine oriented it's like i'm the goddess i'm you know what i'm talking about uh, wait <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and still there's no meeting even in here it's like it's a polarity it's like they're in opposite polarities and it leads to very strange relationships where the woman's kind of more masculine but she's still doing the feminine things of breathing very loudly and being in a ecstatic pleasure and everything and he kind of like in its soft luxuriatingness and they're kind of having something but they're still irritating each other and scratching at each other and it's like it's not it doesn't feel coherent or harmonious and she still doesn't feel really feminine you know she doesn't feel really dropped into her feminine and she still looks at him and goes like why like why don't i feel your power yeah or he might be able to roar and everything but he's still like his feelings kind of take sometimes start to take up even more space than hers you know sometimes it becomes all about his feelings his vulnerability and not hers and she's like why are we always talking about your feelings and why whenever i share anything you get sensitive and hurt and upset and i have to process you like you know what i'm talking about huh? yeah i've i'm i'm on the tail end i think of this this stage and oh, my awesome. main struggle Jesus. has been to under to feel what the powerful feminine actually is because i think i see power and even safety is a masculine energetic like as long as i'm in a more masculine energy i'm creating safety for myself my business whatever and and and, and as long as i'm powerful i'm safe but the powerful is super masculine so i i'm really exploring my feminine energy of like wait what is powerful there what is big there what is safe there right can i can i be in that energetic and still take care of myself Right. So I, I'm, I, I feel this very much and I recognize it from many, many, many relationships of just both sides being super resentful. Cause I would just think like you turn into a puppy on my lap, right? Mm -hmm. You're a puppy on my lap. And it would, mm -hmm. it would, oh, it would bother me. <laughs> it would mm -hmm. bother me. So in totally. the, and the whole non-committal And then you're energy. bothering, you'd get like even more masculine and scratchy with him. You kind of like start yes. nitpicking and criticizing and yeah trying to redirect energy. trying to redirect right it's this whole the criticizing is a redirecting energy that's a penetrative energy mm -hmm. that right. doesn't that that's doesn't right. get and somebody it, and it comes from one. it comes from fear that's right it doesn't work in the mass and it comes from fear whenever there's criticism nitpicking testing as we they, they're subtle fears that, that the feminine kind of leads with and the, the fear of like are you going to meet me that's actually what it's saying are you actually going to meet me I don't feel like you are. I'm scared that you're not going to meet me. Yeah. So one of so my I'm core like, shadows like, that I work with is um, when the feminine goes, look how you made me feel. Right? Because that's so, that's a guilt trip and a manipulation and actually taking away his freedom because it's like, I want you to change because look what you did to me. Mm -hmm. And the reason I think a lot of women do that is because, or the feminine does, is because we don't believe that if I would just share like, that really hurt 
that that would motivate somebody to change their direction, to change their behavior. We don't trust that just my pain is enough to, for him to, to, to want to respond to that. And so we have to guilt trip. So I very much feel that a lot of that is coming from, from fear and is coming from, from, yeah, just not feeling like somebody, I think somebody cares enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, that, and that's like, it's beautiful. I want to kind of cycle back to the development, but I want to like touch mm-hmm. these pieces as well. Cause I think it's really important. Like one of the big pieces that we're missing in all of this is like, we communicate differently men mm-hmm. and women and the way men need to communicate to women and the way women need to communicate to men to inspire each other is different. We just have a different language. And we, we, we assume that if I speak to a woman, the way I'd like to be speaking, spoken to, it will help her. It doesn't. And a woman thinks if I speak to a man, the way I like to be speak, spoken to, it'll help him or the way that I kind of crave being related to it, it will bring that. It doesn't work. So it's like, mm. let's, let's come back to this, but I just want to touch on your, on your point of, like you said, you know, the vulnerability of just saying, like, I feel really hurt or something like that. And that I don't think if I did that, would he actually be, there's a vulnerability. It's like, you're actually going, I'm going to actually see if you're going to meet me or not. So mm-hmm. it's a beautiful place to look actually, because in that edge where we're moving in towards this integrated space, this is actually how we start supporting each other to go there is by understanding the correct language, understanding the ways to relate to each other. So that what you just shared leading with the vulnerability will evoke if if a man has a masculine essence and he's at least got some degree of willingness to be in contact with that that will bring it out i will naturally go oh i hurt you like i want to like what can i do about that how can i be better you know especially if it's like if it's like I feel really hurt and I want to be closer to you. Like there's a desire in there as well. Like this is, this is what I actually want you. I actually want you closer. Man goes, really? You want, you want me closer? What? Whereas the criticism says, you're wrong. Get away from me. And the man goes, okay, well, I'll get away from you then. You don't, you don't want me. You know, I'm not good enough. We have men have, they're not good enough too, right? Deeply, deeply. Yeah. I like to see this as when, like, if I would say to a man, um, you made me angry. That's an energy that, that goes almost towards him. So even if you wanted to come to me, you couldn't. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and if I haven't, if I haven't entered into a more deeply integral stage, I'll either push back with that. I'll, I'll meet that with anger. We're in a fight now. Or I'll collapse into like shame and be like, oh shit, I fucked up. You know, if, if there's trauma in my system, I may go into some form of some harm, you know, I may be like hit my hand or, you know, we can go, when we get triggered, we can do really weird things, right? You know, I start to feel really dysregulated and agitated about that, you know? Yeah. If I'm more liberal, I might just be like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I might just meet it with like, no, come on, cut that out, you know? And then we can go deeper into it, whatever the, whatever the thing is. But that, you know, when we're moving into the, so let's actually touch on the integral stage and then we can, we can go back, go back to it. So there comes a point in these developmental landscapes, these, these are kind of this mapping that these multiple different researchers have done and they kind of speak to different aspects of our development, but they, they all have really overlaps that demonstrate actually there's something really tangible here. And all of them speak to this very much a, like a, like a jump it's like in one particular framework called spiral dynamics they call it first tier and second tier there's actually a leap where we move into an entirely new operating system like we upgrade our operating system of how we're able to relate as a human and we move into what i call what i call integrative consciousness where we actually start actively integrating all of the stuff really genuinely integrating and so we start integrating shadows we start integrating unowned aspects of our entire developmental history. We start integrating, you know, parts of that have been left behind developmentally in childhood. We start integrating polarities, you know, and so in this masculine feminine unfolding, I've gone into my feminine. That's the, the stage right preceding this one. I've started to feel my feelings. I know what it's like to be in contact with my feminine as a man. And then I start hitting integral and I start actually coming 
I decide, you know, masculine and feminine become objects. They become objects rather than subjects, meaning that they're now conceptual things I can conceptually understand and embody because I have enough awareness around what does feminine feel like? What does masculine feel like? What do all these different archetypes feel like? We get into archetype play and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can kind of start moving between them. The more ability I have to move between them, the more I have this as an object in my awareness. It's no longer... I'm no longer identified with it. It is something that I can choose to identify with. So I started doing this for my feminine. And now I start doing it for my masculine. When I go into interval, I start going, moving into more of a masculine identity as I start making object of like a deep masculine and I can hold my feminine. And it's like this inner holding of the feminine actually allows me to relate to the feminine. I can now speak her language. And a woman does the same thing with her masculine. She starts being able to hold her masculine as she settles into and explores what it's like to be deeply feminine. So now we're entering into this form of conscious polarity. Yeah, I always, I love what you're saying. I um, I can see this, especially in men, but I, I know it's the same for, for women too, but you can only, you're, you're, his masculine feels only as deep as he has embraced his inner feminine because how can he hold something outside of him if he can't within him? And it's the same I know my princessy behavior comes out because I've outsourced my masculine and he needs to hold it. So if he wavers, I'm fucked. If he wavers, but I've cultivated my inner masculine, it's like, okay, you're not, you're not holding this pole. Cool. I can do that in myself. Right. And so it'd be the, the, I think because the masculine is this beautiful oath to freedom. The moment I've cultivated my inner masculine as, as a woman with a feminine essence, I can actually respect this oath to freedom. And I've noticed he's, he can show up much greater because I don't need him in his confidence, rock, greatness. I don't need him there. He can waver. He can waver. And because he can waver, he actually becomes much bigger. And that's, what, that's why I love polarity works. The deeper Beautiful. you get into it, the more fluid it almost becomes, mm-hmm. right? But this is, this is really, I, and I can see the work that I do with men, we do the same. We have them connect to their inner feminine and it actually fires up their masculine way more. It's as if the moment they've gone into their inner feminine, their inner masculine is like, oh, I can take up space now. I feel it. Yeah. So mm, beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, like something that just occurred to me, and, and I think this is, this is really interesting because there's a movement happening and I've you know I've thrown my 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 own kind of perspective in it from time to time around like and I know you have too around like ending this kind of internalized misandry this kind of like resentment and bitterness and hatred towards men you know that is like wild and it's like how does a woman start becoming more in her feminine by embodying her masculine she has to end her hatred of the masculine like if if she is hating the masculine or hating men as a representation of the masculine she's hating that inside of herself too resenting that and resenting the fact that she's had to step into her masculine resenting the fact that she's been in this journey of kind of feeling her own masculine like you can't actually start to be feminine from that place yeah you're always, I, there's a shadow and you're always pushing it away yeah and what you yeah, resist you, persists you can't hate what you want to call in Right. You can't hate exactly. what you want to call in. And I, I notice it in myself that when my, when a man around me becomes vulnerable and I now need to, or I get to step into a bit more of a masculine energy that I'm angry. My first initial response is like, Ugh, I didn't want to do that. Right. And that's so interesting because we, I want this energy from somebody else that if I'm in it, I'm actually quite immature right I'm actually really immature I'm resentful that somebody requires this from me but then I feel like I can require it constantly that doesn't it doesn't make sense it doesn't add up and 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 I think everybody picks up on that they pick up on the the maturity of your inner polarity yeah 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 yeah, yeah beautiful day right. mm. mm. go on <laughs> well not this that's a, it's an interesting one as well. It's like, yes, sometimes a woman is going to have to hold shit together for whatever reason. You know, if we, if we look at the analogy of earlier times or whatever, or even actually now, say I had a really bad 
accident and with a woman and I had a really bad accident and like both my legs and arms got broken and I'm now in a like in a wheelchair for six months having to heal like she's gonna have to step in and, and play a very different role in that relationship yes you know um or I just get really sick you know I'm sick for 24 or 48 hours or something like that there is a particular role that has to be has to happen um and a man being in a moment of emotional vulnerability is a similar space because we're still healing our traumas, right? We're still healing the the parts of us that got really hurt, you know, mm. early on. Both all of us, men and women. And in that healing, it's like similar to healing from those broken legs. It's similar to healing from a night of food poisoning, but it's it's an emotional wound. And mm. so they're gonna come up. In the relationship sometimes and it's like so can she meet him in his healing too in those moments when he is absolutely has no ability to take care of him because when we go into a deep you know trigger response and it and it's especially like if we're if we're starting to enter into an integral relationship it starts to become by by virtue of the way we're connecting a healing relationship so those things are going to get emerged or resolve and we're going to know that because i'll see you as you even though my body's gone into physiological distress and i'm screaming on the inside and i'm like contracting and i'm in fear and everything i won't lash out at you from that place because i'm actually able to recognize the differentiation between my own trauma and you does yeah. that does that make sense yeah so but it may it's going to have an effect i'm going to go into a freeze a shutdown a contraction and some kind of collapse and you're going to have to go oh my god he's just abandoned me that's what it'll feel like for the woman. Like he's no longer present to me. I have to be present to him. And in those moments, it's crucial. It's like, do you make him wrong for actually giving something he can't help because his body is going through a healing response or do you meet him? Yeah. And if you make him wrong, we're, we're going to regress the stage and we're going to start to perpetuate the trauma bond between us. We're actually going to start relating back in this insecure attachment pattern, back in a trauma bond. So we can actually heal our part of the healing of the insecure attachment is the way we meet each other. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I um, I like calling this radical trust. So can we trust that also when he has to take care of himself, that he will come back, so that totally. even there you 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 actually honor his masculine energy by saying, okay, I see that you're hurting. I see that you're more vulnerable. I see that you you need me to maybe step up a little bit. But I'm going to trust that you're going to come back to me. I'm going to trust that you're going to come back to me. I'm going to trust that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to switch this at some point. You haven't abandoned me. And I, I feel, I know that I'm, I'm deeply feminine myself. So we were so in the now. So the moment he wavers, there is a right away. Like I'm dying. Right. It's just like, you've abandoned me. I'm never coming back. <laughs> yeah. You're never coming back. It's all over. And to actually feel like, oh no, but I can trust you. And you are human. I feel really how we speak about men is we, we expect at least excellence. And that is so rough. It's so rough. Like I, as I develop my inner mask and I'm, I'm starting to really feel for men because wow, we're giving sometimes a really rough deal. The way we speak about men, the way we speak about what they need to be, about how they need to step up, about all of this and not really honoring their intention and every little way for ring is wrong. Wow, that's really rough. That's really, really rough. I really, I really feel for that. I really feel for that. Yeah. I remember I heard, I heard about it the for the first time, like where it really landed. I'm um, listening to a talk on from Brene Brown on shame, mm -hmm. and she talked about when she started doing the research. She'd done this, she'd done a book signing or whatever, and she she'd been presenting about shame, particularly about women, women's shame, body shame, all that kind of stuff, and vulnerability as a healing. And um, a man came up, his big friend said, "Hey, I'd really like to." She have a moment with you to say something and his wife's like come on come on come on he's like no no i'd really like to speak with her for a moment and the wife is like kind of hanging off there and the daughter and like sitting there and Brene finishes up and she's like what's up and he's like i really like what he said that like what about men she's like what are you talking about and it's like something you gotta realize is that my wife and daughter over there would rather see me die than fall off the white horse i'm riding You know, and like that's kind of the standard that we hold men to. And like the thing is, 
the irony is in the great paradox is we can totally meet that standard when we're treated as humans. Yeah. That's the great paradox. Yeah. yeah. You know, when we're given the opportunity to actually be in our unfolding, we can start to meet that as men. I, I believe we can. I feel like I am more and more every day. But it's been a process. It's been a long, rough journey, just like for anyone else, man or woman. We're on our journey, you know, and that journey is a difficult one at times. It just really is. Yeah. And I love what you said earlier about communicating not in the way that you would like to be spoken to, but honoring how their system would like to, like to be spoken to. And that, I think that for me is, is the integral, the integral relating part of really like, okay, I, I, I need you to be present for me right now. I'd love for you to be present for me right now. But instead of me going, you're not present and I want more of that. How can I communicate in a way that honors your system? And this is really going away from things like men have frail egos, right? Because that's how we speak about it. Like men have all these egos that yeah. need to be tended to. No, when you're in a lead, like being a leadership role for a little bit, you need to feel that people care about how, that people are appreciating or enjoying or whatever, the energy that you're putting there. I know when I give a workshop and everybody's just there like, eh, that's hard. I don't, I don't know what to base anything on. If I can feel their delight or their frustration or their boredom, then I'm like, okay, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I know where to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. to really start honoring that in the way we speak to each other. Uh, yeah. I love what you said there, the co actually communicating well, in a way that we, that we, the other, for their other system, the way they speak. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, like, like, it's like the men have frail egos. Like you can say that, but it's like, it's this futile of saying men have penises, like men have penises. They shouldn't have penises. It's like, like, what do you mean? That's how my body is wired, right? Like, that's how my body is put together. Yeah, but you shouldn't have that. It's just, like, what craziness is that? Like, this is how, a, like, a man's system works in a certain way, just like a woman's does. And, and we are different. And, like, we have to understand that if we want the best out of men, we have to treat them in a way that brings out their best. We can't go, well, you should be different. It's like, like, I don't, like, you're saying something that's actually almost an impossibility. You know, if we turned it around and said that to women, it's like, you shouldn't be so emotional ever. Like, like a woman is an emotional being and, and there's a lot of actually trauma in the world from women being told they can't be emotional. Yes. And I want to bring that, you know, like a woman is an emotion. She is emotion, right? She is the whole dance of it, the whole dance of expression and feeling, right? You know, and we like, actually want to honor that and men are wired in a certain certain way and so a man's like a man is wired to win you know we are like mm -hmm. that's what gets us off is when we're succeeding when we're when we're getting it right you know and we're wired to win and we we grow particularly from women we grow through appreciation that's just what makes us become more masculine like, but I shouldn't have to give him appreciation. He needs to earn it first. It's like, well, you can you can have that attitude if you'd like, but you're just never going to get the best out of your man. You just won't. Like, it just won't happen. And you can hold on to that for the, your entire life, and you'll still never get the best out of men. Yeah. So it's like we we when a man. I mean, the caveat here is like obviously men are at different developmental stages and different levels of maturity, and some men you know, actually don't really deserve a huge amount of appreciation until they show up in certain ways. This is the caveat, you know, it's not like yeah. go out there and saying. like, yeah, go out there and appreciate all men, even when they're acting like total jerks. Like, no, 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 that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when you're, when you're with some, when you're with a man you care about and you know he's actually a good man, yeah. the way to get the best out of him is to actually lead with appreciation, lead with appreciation, desire and vulnerability like as a, as a feminine, like those are the three things to, mm -hmm. this is what I want more of you from, because I, I want to feel closer to you. I want to feel closer to you. I want to feel your power. I want to feel your essence. I want to feel you because I love you and I want you. You know, the man is like, oh, really? You know, vulnerabilities, it's like, I feel scared. You know, when you said that, I feel hurt. I feel, you know, and appreciation is like, oh, I love when you do that, you know, or like if, if you know, like, I so it would mean so much to me if you could bring that pot plant in from outside. You know, that would really make my day. I'd be like, as a man, I'd be like, really? All I have to do is move that pot plant, and you get happy. Oh, all right, I'll do it. You know, 
I will. I get, I get, I get to make you happy, and when you're happy, oh, like everything's good, you know. We have all these expressions, and they, you know, happy wife, happy life, you know. Like these are some of the things I know Brazilians like saying this: happy wife, happy life. We have all these things, you know, around like keeping a woman happy because it's real. When a woman's happy as a man, you go, life's good, you know. She's happy. She's turned on. She wants me. I'm doing good. And then, and then, you know, a bit more strut, you know, a bit more swagger when my strut comes out when I'm out in the street. Cause I'm like, I know there's a woman back there who wants me, you know, and she's turned on by me. So now I'm actually becoming more masculine and confident in the world. She's going to wear an upward spiral now, which is going to turn her on more. And she's going, Oh, I like the way he's swaggering. And then she's going to see other women noticing him going, that's my man, you know? And she gets even more juiced up by that. And he's like, yeah, I am your man. You know, like, and now we're in this upward spiral. We're actually lift, elevating each other. Well, we're elevating the masculine, but that, you know, especially as we move to integral states, we start seeing like giving and receiving a reciprocal arrangement with each other. Like yeah. when we lift one, we lift the other. They just happen in conjunction with one another. They co-arise. Yeah, this I love. I love how you. I love how you just elevate. spoke about the the spiral because it almost feels like at a certain point it becomes a flywheel. Where you're just yeah. you're just nourishing each other. It becomes just like my my delight of him makes him bigger, and that delights me even more. And in that way, we just keep building ourselves more and more. I do want to ask, I think, because I, I have a lot of people who ask me this question of how to when a man has lost his purpose or a man has lost his power or his penetration or his his ownness almost when he's the couch potato and he's not happy, but he's also not doing anything about it when it's, when he's just a bit meh and he's also not stepping up for himself. Then what do you do as the more feminine energy in that relationship? Because we don't want to become one of his brothers, right? We don't want to be like, Hey dude, you need to step up. Right. Cause that, that actually, that kills something. So with, even if he would step up, it would kill something. So what is, what's maybe from the, from a man's perspective, what's needed there? Is it actually still the radical appreciation of even then? What the, like the question for me I have, is this like, are we talking about a state that's gone chronic? Like he was showing up and then he just kind of got lazy and lethargic and started thinking, is that, is that what we're yeah, talking for about? Yeah, most of them, like you're yeah. in a relationship you're in a relationship and it was pretty good at the beginning and then he just like once he kind of got you it just stagnated and he just got lazy and started becoming a couch potato no i don't think it is radical appreciation it's like i actually think that both of us really in a way need to be living on our edge a little bit and mm -hmm. Part of that edge in a relationship is that it is unknown, you know, that like, I don't know if I want to stay with you, if you are like this. Ooh. It's the truth, yeah. right? Like if this man was not going to change, would you want to stay with him? Would yeah. that be in service to how you want to live your life? No. And so that is a realistic thing. It's like, you know, not to make him wrong, not to criticize him. We're not doing any of that. We're not blaming him. We're not trying to push him to do anything. It's yeah. literally like, I, this is not working for me. This is not working for the kind of life I want to live. And I don't think I want to stay with you if this is how it goes. Oh, and if that, that doesn't light a fire up his ass, you know, then he does, he's just, he's saying, I don't want to be with you. This is so the feminine like, practice to be able to communicate that in a way that isn't manipulative to say, I don't know if I want right. to stay with you to say, to, to really let that come from a place like this is genuinely what's in my heart instead of again, the look how you made me feel you should change, right? To really feel the vulnerability rather than the trying to change something. That's yeah, the practice. Rather than it's and like hard. poking and prodding and and like coercing and all this thing to try and get him to change so you would feel better. None of that. Like yeah. don't do any of that. But definitely like make it real. Like that is that's the vulnerability, right? The vulnerability is, is like I'm not happy anymore. And I don't think I want to stay in this relationship. If this is how it's going to be, I don't want to stay here. And if he doesn't go, oh fuck, what can I do? 
and then you go well you know I, like this would be really i would really love this i would really love if you did this or i'd really love if we could explore this together or this would make me feel really excited you know this is something i'd really enjoy with you this would reignite it like these kind of things like okay one i now know how i could meet that and then just is he going to meet it or not and then just be real like be real of like he's not going to and what kind of life do i want do i want to live a life that's like orgasmic and turned on and joyful and just like in polarity with someone and like kind of meeting me in the way I want to play this life. What I want kind of one that I start just getting resentful for. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like we we're allowed to have standards. Yeah. Yeah. We're allowed to have standards. And, and I think for a lot of people underneath that, there's a, there's a fear that there's nobody else. Right. And so they stay too long. And that's, that's, part, that's, that's what we're going to have to confront. That's living in our edge, yeah. right? You know, it's living, living at my edge. It's like holding to my standards, even if they may never be met. You know, like, and that's the, that's the only way I'm ever going to get what I want. Oh, even if they never get met. Well, I felt that one. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then in the relating itself, there's like for me, there's an edge. I've, I've recently made a post around like, there are no agreements we can make to oh, yeah. keep our heart self, you know? And to me, like mm. playing at that edge of like, I'm not, there's no agreements. We're not making any commitment to like, okay, we're now committed. We're a couple with, that's it. We're in, because then that's what happens. The stagnancy, I've won the game. It's over. It's like, no, actually the game, like I never win the game. Like it's, it, we're playing. There is no win. There's no end point to the game. It continues forever, you know? And we may be so deeply into each other but I still don't know whether we will be tomorrow or the next day. I'm just choosing today. You know? And that's, yeah. that's where we're going to advance polarity. That's when we're going to interval you know, relating. And that's where we have to have done our work in dealing with our insecure attachment because the insecure nervous system, that's hell. And so a lot of the clutching at trying to gain some kind of ongoing security is, is an externalization of that abandonment fear of like, how can I, Swage that fear by making you do something for me versus actually coming into internal security, you know. And when we're in internal security, we can show up. I like this is where it gets really, really nuanced. Like this sense of I don't know if we'll be together isn't a threat. There's no yes. threat in that. There's no like I might leave you. It's just the truth. We don't know what's going to happen. I'm choosing you right now. Like I am choosing you with every single part of me in this moment. And that's all I can promise. Yeah. And then for me, it's like, that's enough. Like you, you showing up with every single part of you in this moment is fucking the best thing this moment could ever have. Yeah. I don't need to worry about the next moment. In my previous relations, I do, when I'm I'm the future. In my previous relation when I was a bit more anxious I uh, I would have all these agreements like you're gonna t like can we agree that you text me every day because then my nervous system settles down and even if he would text me every day it would never actually feel that good and then and then if, when he didn't text me every day I would get on my high horse and be very upset because we made an agreement right now I feel that my partner has an intent because he wants to speak to me has the intent to message me and I feel his intent and I trust that and that I'm not noticing whether he texts me or not. It's not on my radar anymore. When normally I would be obsessed with the phone. I was like, still, oh my God, I have no idea what he's doing. Now I don't even feel that. It doesn't even, I don't even think about it anymore because I have felt his intention to want to, to be committed to me as a partner rather. And that's about so much deeper. And, and then it doesn't, what his behaviors are or aren't doesn't matter as much whether he can join me to go to the hospital, for instance, whether that actually happens doesn't matter as much because I can feel that his intention is that he wants to show up for me. And if he can, he will. And if he can't, he has a very, he has for himself a very good reason why not. And so I'm actually trusting him in his own system. And that for me was the biggest shift because I think the agreements and you, I love, I love that post because the agreements are, are, they don't feel good when they're made and they don't feel good to receive because they're all like little tiny ultimatums. 
And what if somebody would just text you most days because they want to, and you don't ever have to think about it, mm -hmm. right? That's a very exactly. different energetic. Yeah. yeah. Than making somebody do it. Yeah. Totally. And then, then expecting and then having, and then it's like, I now have weapons for when you're not showing up the way that I want you to show up because I got you to agree to this thing. I got you to sign this contract, whether yes. verbal or written, you know, some people go as far as making written contracts. I, I now have this thing I can hold over you that you're, you're committed to me showing up for me. And it's doesn't like, it doesn't make you any safer, you know, but, no. and, and if it does, it, it leeches out the edge at least, especially for the masculine, the edge of like, I'm alive, like I'm right on the edge. I don't know whether I'm going to make it or not. Like it, that's gone. And then you become the couch potato. It's like, then I'm like, I've got you. It's happened. I'm just like, yeah. what else is there to do? You know, versus like, I have to seduce you every single day. Yeah. You know? And not even I want to, I want to seduce you every single day like that is actually my joy you know in the masculine polarity it's like i'm you know like my my uh, yeah i want to talk about it my, my way of relating like if i'm if i'm starting to really drop in with a woman like i want i want her wet almost all the time like i just want her in that anticipation i wrote a post about that as well like a well-fucked woman a well-fucked man like that is the state where it's like where like you know, 10 seconds away from sex at any given moment. You know, we, we may take a lot longer. It's not like we're going to always do that, but we could if we wanted to at any given moment. It's like, it's right there. It's available. We're in that field with each other. And that field is masculine, feminine polarity. It's not necessarily we're always talking about sex or we're doing that. It's like every time I penetrate her in some way, and that's with love, I penetrate her to experience herself more lovingly mm. she she mm. shows up she maybe she like she ate too much and she feels bloated and uncomfortable and i meet that and like actually be like your mouth your mouth was really enjoying the food and and didn't listen to the signals that your stomach was saying and like <laughs> i love your tummy and you know, and i'm like being with her and, that, and she's like dropping into like more self-love where she's in a shame spiral before it's like mm. or she's not feeling good about herself it's like that's penetration, right? But it's, we, get, we get concerned with the word penetration because we think of this erect thing like jamming into us. It's like, no, penetration is just the moving into something. And so we can move into it with like so much love, so much grace. I'm seeing like this like penetration as a penetration back to love. And you can do that the whole day. Yeah. You can do that the whole day. Constantly. Yeah. yeah into opening all the time it's an opening and so you know and like this is this became really interesting for me i don't want to go too far into like the subtle energetics uh, right now maybe part three <laughs> <laughs> just start our own podcast go on <laughs> um what was i gonna say i used to like i used to feel really intimidated with a woman's sexuality mm -hmm. um because it's like, it's oceanic. It's like enormous. It's like this thing that's like, how could I ever, ever meet that? Like, I felt like I was like a little man in a canoe trying to paddle through the ocean. It's like, how could I ever satisfy a woman? How could I ever meet the immensity of her sexuality, her eros? So then I realized, I actually started realizing that my penetration is infinite also. I can yes. penetrate forever ever in every moment and so it's just as infinite as her opening because it's not really her eros it's her opening that's like so vast but so is my penetration i can penetrate forever in every moment and so she can open in every moment yeah she can want more more and more and more and more and he can keep giving more and more and more and i want more too you know yeah and then yeah. there's a reciprocal thing and i want more of her love like i have that Steving her love and adoration and appreciation when she says like I'm so wet for you or she's like you know like oh my god you're amazing or she start you know she starts feeding me with her appreciation and adoration I'm like I want more of that and it makes me want to give her more of my penetration that opening that return to love and they're just like feeding each other constantly 
and then we want more and we get more you know yeah yeah because I think a lot of men code the woman wanting more wanting more wanting more is them not being enough and one of my posts was about that that actually the man I want more from is because I want it from him right when he's not giving me enough and when I ache for more of him it's a compliment to him because I want more of him right if I had actually if I'd rejected him I wouldn't want more absolutely yeah Yeah. and the more is an opportunity like this is when we start aligning with like growth and growth through pleasure rather than growth through pain like as a response Mm -hmm. to pain like when we're still oriented in kind of our pain body Mm -hmm. we hear that I want more and it's like I'm not good enough you know like oh I'm I'm not going to be able to meet it somehow but when we actually start moving into these inner stages we've cleaned up a lot of our shadow we're moving into these like kind of you know early later stage you know I think I actually think developmentally we've got so much further to go which is really exciting um and we're moving into this place we go that's how I grow is by giving her more that's actually what has me become more powerful more masculine more embodied yeah heals my trauma you know has me more effective in the world has me more aligned with myself is actually in a, in the context of a romantic partnering is meeting her desire for more with more yeah yeah from lack to longing from lack to longing totally yeah Beautiful. hey i want to and we, you and I could talk for ages. I realize I think we've been talking for a while now. I want to get into the last little part of something you and I touched on just before we, we started is what happens with men when they go into a relating and they lose themselves. They lose their purpose. They lose their power because maybe it's a bit related actually because they so want to give her everything. And it becomes at the expense of themselves. Yeah. It becomes yeah. what yeah. what's needed there. Yeah, tell me. Well, definitely they're, they're, they're appeasing. They're, they're putting her above themselves in that moment. Yeah. And like you said, it's not a there's no there's no connection to, you know, and I can speak from my own experience, but I've definitely experienced myself a lot from this place. There's no like it's all about, I'm like, I'm just trying to formulate how do I want to say this? Because I think it actually ties a lot of the threads that we're talking about yeah. together. Yeah. So it, it becomes about winning her as yeah. the end goal of my life. So I get her and now I'm no longer I have anything left to do. So I just sit on the couch and play video games. Yeah, I finally got her. That's one of the, the possibilities that can happen there. Or if I'm a more, that's probably a more avoidant type will do that kind of thing. A more yeah. anxious type, which is where I am more for, it would just become, she's the center of my world and I'm just absolute response to, not good response, a bad response to her emotion in that any emotion she feels I take on as something I've done wrong and I'm constantly hypervigilant to her and, and I have no connection to the rest of my life. It's just all about her. That's, I mean neither of those relationships are going to last very long. The couch potato one might last a little bit longer than the the anxious, needy one hovering around her isn't going to last very long with any woman who has any real desire to be in a feminine. Or oh, connection to a masculine either. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lack of connection to something beyond her something that would be stable and consistent whether she was in in my life or not if she, if I was to lose her would I still have connection to something Im, important to my to me would I still have connection to something that is meaningful to me whether she's connected would I would I carry on doing what I'm doing whether she's in my life or not would, when she comes into my life will I carry on what I'm doing you know that's that's what purpose is. Purpose is something that is consistent to me. It's mine. It's my contribution. It's my way of expressing my essence into the world. So if we're starting to move towards this integrated masculine, like I have desire to teach about this integrated masculine. This is something yeah. that I really want to go into. And, you know, and honestly, like the, my, my main motivation is like, 
in fairness to women, really, because it's out of my life as a feminist. It's like, okay, like I feel like I'm starting to develop in these places and I can meet women in my life in a way that I'm like, holy fuck, this is really good, you know? And so I'm like, I'm one man and I only want to be with one woman, but what about all these other beautiful women? You know, who's going to do this for them? <laughs> That's kind of where I am from. It's like, okay, like how do I support other men in being this? Because I actually really believe in men too. You know, I believe men are beautiful human beings and I, and I believe in the power of men. And when I see men who step up and they're in this integral place it's like oh that's my brother i get to play with them you know i also want to play with them too yeah so yeah. i want to teach more about the integral or the integrated masculine and like i think there are a lot of keys to it and and especially how they meet women how they meet life how they you know just be yeah. great men move from good men to great men and to me this is this integrated masculine thing and so i decided the first thing i want to do is about purpose because i actually think that like that's how there's an anchor or there's roots this is how i put my tap root into the earth is my sense of purpose this is how i like make a stand so this is who i am this is who i am as a man as a human as this life this phenomenon this experience this essence this unique essence that is amen is what i'm here to do be whatever that is and yeah. purpose is an interesting thing because like there are lots of men's groups. I remember going to Mankind Project, which is one of these men's training things. And we did a bit on purpose, but I didn't, I felt I'd already done a lot of work by that point. I'd already been in my, I actually think that some of these trainings is just helping men come out of their rigid masculine and into their feminine. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of bumps them into their feminine feeling space and leaves them there. And I'm like, no, 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 we need to keep going. We now need to come back into our masculine, you know? Yeah. So I've, I've been in places where purpose is like either this rah, rah, rah thing or it's some vague statement that doesn't really have any connection to life. So for me, purpose is something that's unshakable. Like, like, like I know my purpose, like I can say it and I can feel it. And my purpose is to participate in the evolution of consciousness. That's just what I'm here to do. And it sounds kind of abstract, Yet every single, I mean, I go unconscious in moments and sometimes I eat the pizza or whatever, you know, but generally my life is oriented around that. Yeah. That's the work that I do, the type of relating I do, the conversations that I have, what I make a priority in my life. You know, I prioritize, you know, getting on a call with you at like, you know, 1030 in the evening on a Friday night. Where, where I live in a place where there's no lockdown and I could go out and party if I want to, I'm going to party tomorrow night. But, um, <laughs> but instead, <laughs> I'm going to do that with a certain purpose and let loose too. Um, because that's actually what I care about. You know, I care, care about more than kind of being in the flow of what women, woman I could meet tonight or whatever, you know. Although that's always good too, you know, if that's, if that's what I'm oriented towards. So I think like without that, without actually a really strong connection to that, we don't stand a chance as men in an integral relationship because we're either going to try and get her and turn into the couch potato or we're just going to become obsessed, oriented around her. That We're going to be in this more immature phase of us unless, unless I'm connected to some part of me that's like, even if, if you leave, I'm going to be hurt. Like the truth is I'll be hurt. Yet, yeah, I'm still going to keep doing, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. Like, at least I'm going to go back to that and it will hurt and it will probably suck for a little while and I won't have the same passion. I'll probably have to trudge through, like, why do I even bother? You know, and this is, this is just part of the process of men. We kind of like, men have a bit of a rough experience and that is just the nature of being men. We like, you know, sometimes being a man is exhausting. It's like, we will trudge through a swamp, you know, on a multi-day hike being eaten by insects and then go to battle when we haven't even slept more than four hours in the past three days and then go to battle for the next six hours and hopefully still be alive at the end of it to fight for the freedom of women and children left behind. This is what men will do, right? Mm -hmm. And okay, we're not doing that version of it anymore, but when we're in our masculinity, this is what we'll do as men. You know, yeah. and it will get gritty and hard sometimes. And it's just 
part of man life, you know? And then it starts to become a joy. You know, it doesn't become like this grudging, resentful thing. It's like, I, it, it, it means something. Grudging through that swamp and going to battle is for something. Yeah, beautiful, Damien. I, I recognize this from my personal life and also from so many of the men I've heard the just really how to balance your purpose and your beloved almost right and how not to get lost in either I know for myself like I'm, I'm always for me the edge is that he hasn't completely just disappeared and drowned into me at his own expense and he's also not only like I'm on my purpose I'm on my purpose don't murder me I'm on my purpose I'm on my purpose that that, that he's able to balance those two and I think that that is such an inter or one of the key parts to the nice guy to to the to the guy the, the version that you were talking about when we started of the you know goes to every festival no commitments and like right it's key to all of it like can you actually balance your purpose and your and your and your love can you can you what's can you live with both of them and not drown in either can you keep both yeah. of them in your life yeah well, here's, here's where it actually gets really exciting, right? Is when my beloved becomes part of my purpose. Yeah. 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 Relating to her, I relate to her as part of my purpose. And if, I, if my purpose is to participate in the evolution of consciousness, my relationship is the evolution of consciousness. My love for her is how I evolve consciousness. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no separation. There's, like I don't have to balance anything. She just becomes Oof. an extension of that purpose. I'm not less. I'm not lost in it. I'm not lost in her. That's just what. Yeah. What is yeah. happening? Yeah. Tell us about this programming and ending. So it starts on the sixth of March or seventh of March, depending on what time zone you're in. <laughs> it's just one month. It's a one month program. It's like the way I'm the way I really want to run it is I want to give some of my teachings around integral masculinity it's kind of it's really like the practice is purpose that's what we're practicing but the framework is integral masculinity and that's what I'm presenting is, is a framework and purpose is the way we're going to investigate it so integral integral theory is something that's drawn from so this is philosopher Ken Wilbur and what I love about Ken Wilber's work is he's written, I don't know how many books, so many yeah. books, right? He talks about the same fucking thing in every book. It's the same thing, but it's from a different angle because this meta framework can be applied to anything. So he talks about it from the angle of psychology, the angle of spirituality, the angle of religion, the angle of politics, the angle of semiotics, which is how we make meaning, you know, the angle of ecology, the angle of polarity and sex. I mean, it's really dense. His writings on polarity is like, but I translated it right in my head, <laughs> and so I'm. I, I love that, and it's like, well, that can be applied to anything. So I'm doing the same thing for purpose. Like, let's yeah. take this meta framework and apply it to this notion of purpose. And so I have that. I have practices, practices that I discovered. Some of them are, are my own practices. That when I when I ran them, I was like, oh my god, that's like really deep. You, I think you did one of them. I hope you've done one of them. <laughs> I mean, one of Damien's courses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so, so, we, so we're going to have the discourse on integral masculinity. We're going to have practices to get in line with the, the, the purpose. But what, what I am really wanting to embed in here is that embedded in the course is a men's group for the duration of the, the month. So I'm going to pair people up with men in the same time zone that they're in, ideally. They're going to be with those men, meet once a week. I'm going to give them topics to talk about so they have an opportunity to be with brothers in the exploration. Also, every week there's homework practices. So I'm going to pair them up with another man from outside of their group to get together with and do the practices because they're partner-based practices. So there's a lot of interaction is mm. what I really love because it's actually the practice of this stuff that has us grow, the interaction with this stuff. So that's what... I'm excited for it, like how to encourage it by being in the community of, of it, community of doing it. Mm. So mm. that's kind of my starting point, And then we'll, we'll see where we'll go later in the year with this stuff. I wish I could join. <laughs> well, my housemate, my housemate, I live with three women. 
I moved in with three women. I thought I'm going to be the boss of this house. I'm just throwing off the boss. <laughs> I tried. I have the master bedroom. At least that's good enough. Um, <laughs> depend, on the, depend on the master by having the master bedroom. <laughs> one, of my, one of my housemates, um, she, read the, she read the post and she's like, I want to do this. Can you do a version for women as well in one of our like late night in the bathroom chat while we're brushing our teeth? She's like, can you do a version for women as well? I was like, yeah. Okay. So I might do a version for women as well later. Same same kind of structure, but tweaked a little for the masculine inside of a woman versus yes. the masculine inside of a man. Yes, 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 Damien. Beautiful, beautiful. We've been talking for a very, very long time and I am so, so, yeah, I think for like an hour and a half. <laughs> I'm so grateful for your time and I want to do more of these because this is so, this is so good. This is so rich. I'm well, luckily, so luckily we are going to be doing them. But we do. So we have something called BDSM, which stands for big, deep soul musings. <laughs> I may have thought that was a different word, but big deep soul musings. And that's every Friday. We have our own little radio show where we just hang out and talk and share whatever's alive in our world. So definitely check that out. I think we're doing it both on Facebook the, the, and the on pilot. Clubhouse. We're in the pilot phase. The pilot. Yeah, we're in the pilot phase. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're conducting a pilot. I think we're doing four episodes and then we're going to launch season season one or season two. I don't know how you call it, but we're in the pilot. Yeah. But you're not going to make it to tomorrow's one for t- yeah my today's one no because i'm gonna i'm gonna that teach women is. how to be an initiatress <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun too but i wish you were with us i know i know i can't wait to be there next week it's gonna be really good yeah. damien thank you so so much for being here today and uh where can people find out about purpose your program evolutionaryrelating.org backslash purpose got it and so that's all one word Got it. I thank you so much, Damien. Thanks, Sophie.